Shallow Wong, Ms. Osmawa. Naka Wong. Uh, Khan. Yeah, we back. Uh, this is going to be something quick. Uh, at least we plan on for it to be quick. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Uh, and that's all praises to the Heavenly Father. And uh, in his son's name, who the world really calls Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. All right. So yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Considering the times that you know we're living in, you know we're living in a lot of um, prophecy drenched times, man. Uh, you know that should be the cheapest thing that uh, that we have in the forefront of our minds, and also the forefront of our tongues as well. That's that's what needs to be talked about right now. So I guess I'll start off with this real quick. Sirach thirty nine. Yeah, Khan. After that, uh, after that, um, I have some too. After that, Khan. Yeah. So this is the book of Sirach, chapter thirty-nine, verse one, it says, "But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies." Right. So you're occupied in these prophecies, and you're also occupied in the law, which in the law has prophecies with and in and of itself, right? So you're going to be occupied in the law and you're also going to be occupied in these prophecies. And, you know, basically when you're occupied in something, that's where you get that word occupation from. So this is this is your job, right? This is your um, the job that the Most High has given out, uh, you know, to, to the kings, to the, to the up and uh, well, to the upcoming kings that's going to rule his world in righteousness, right? So what you had up? Fine, uh, Amos 3 and 8. Fine. All right, it says, it says, the lion hath warred, who will not, who will not fear? If the Lord power has spoken, who can but prophesy? You see that? So I'm um, the heavenly father has spoken, who can but, who can but prophesy? So because if a lion war, people is guaranteed is going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Like that's just given. So, so if the most I has spoken, we damn sure got, and we damn sure had to prophesy. Right, because this is something that we can't hold in. If you're really a prophet of the Heavenly Father, you can't you can't help it but to prophesy. And that's how uh that's how Jeremiah felt. Uh I got got precept Jeremiah 20 and, and 9. <laughs> because Jeremiah felt like that. Jeremiah, man, he wanted he wanted to stop prophesying in the name of the Lord, but he just couldn't. This is Jeremiah 29. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, who is him, the Lord, nor speak any more in his name. Why is that? Because um, basically every time Jeremiah prophesied, you know, he was getting laughed at, mocked at. Also, Jeremiah was thrown in jail, right? Because Israel, it, it was always something common within Israel. They always disliked the prophets. It says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire set up in my bones and um, i was weary with forbearing and i could not stay this was your mouth like, oh damn i just can't hold it in i just got it i gotta say something i gotta prophesy hmm. and that's how it is with us yeah right because before right because before me and a brother hopped on here you know who's talking on fast like yeah man i was looking for a video to do this shoot you want to do a video right now and sure why not because man the words is just in us yeah yeah and and, and to further prove that let me um is Ecclesiastes 3. I'm going to read the first verse and I'm going to skip down. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And I'm going to skip down here to verse um, 7. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. All right? Mm -hmm. And so we are definitely in the season of speaking. Right? We're in the season of prophesying and teaching. Huh? Right? Because I, what you say? I have a precept. Come on, come on. Because, you know, as the Most High just told you, there's a time to speak and there's a time to keep silence, right? Because pretty soon, man, right, you're not going to have that luxury, right, that you take for granted <laughs> on seeing, you know, uh, these videos or seeing uh, the brothers out there on the street corners teaching, you see, teaching the true doctrine. That luxury, right, that, that, has, that, that the masses have taken for granted, that's going to be withdrawn 
right? Because there's going to be a time where the prophets, you know, and, and the teachers of the Most High, they're going to have to go into hiding, man. And the Most High is just going to shut up the, the tongue of their mouth so they don't prophesy anymore. Because he did the same thing. He did the same thing to uh, the prophet Ezekiel. I'm going to show you this real quick. Yeah, and I'll, I'm going to get you proof that by the way. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter three, verse twenty-six. He says, "And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth." that thou shalt be dumb, talking about how he's going to be quiet, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. So yeah, this time of speaking right now, right, it's only for a short amount of time. It's not like prophets that the Most High just thrust the prophets out in the, in the view uh, of, of the world to, to be there forever. No, prophets were only there for a season. Everything has its season, right? And so once the prophets are withdrawn or the teachers are withdrawn, you're not going to have a reprover. And guess what? When, whenever you don't have someone to correct you, well, you're just wallowing more and more in sin, which is making yourself a, a bigger target for those missiles, man. So it's a, it's a bad thing whenever someone isn't speaking or someone isn't prophesying. So that's why it's so important to actually use this time to your best advantage. Like Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 18, I believe, uh, he says, redeeming the time, seeing that those are evil times. So you have to make use of every time uh, that, that you're living in, knowing that these are evil days that you're living amongst, man. All right, what'd you have up? Yeah, matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm gonna get two precepts because uh -huh. you just said some, because you said, which is gonna be Second Chronicles 36 and starting verse 15, uh -huh. because you said, because you said to the effect of, if there is nobody prophesying, that's, that's, actually, that's actually a bad thing, right? Because, because the most high sending out his prophets, his teachers, his men, that's the Lord showing compassion, which which we're which we're about to read. The second chronicles 36 and verse 15. It says, And the Lord God of their fathers, which is Yahweh, sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So you see that. So the reason why the Lord sent his prophets is because he has compassion on his people. Matter yeah. of fact, hey, 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 can, you, can you get that in like, in like another translation? Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I just want to know what it says. All right. Uh, you can put it in the yeah, NLT. Yeah. Let's see. It says, uh, the oh, Lord. Yeah. Wait, what is it? Oh, no, no, it's locked. Go ahead, bro. It says, the Lord, the God of the ancestors, repeatedly, <laughs> hmm. repeatedly sent his prophets to warn them for he had compassion on his people and his temple. See that because simply because the Lord has compassion on his people. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I, I want to go into that word for compassion. <clears throat> I just want to see what it says because because bro says something profound. Yeah, I got it right. Oh, here. pity, oh. pity, spare, have compassion on. Mm -hmm. See that? So Mosiah is trying to pity us, mm -hmm. but we are but. But we know that it's only going to be towards the 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 hundred forty four thousand the one third because they're because they're the ones that's going to take heed to it, uh, right? We can go to the entomology the entomology of it is this feeling or sorrow or deep tenderness for one who was suffering or or experiencing misfortune, and that's us right now. Yeah. We're the ones that experience mis misfortune, and the Lord is just and the Lord feels sorrow for it, deep tenderness. That's why he sends us out there. But what do Israel do? Like Proverbs, the first chapter, uh, um, they, they they don't they don't want none of his uh, reproof. That's when it. he called, they didn't answer. That's it. And and I got this other precept. Okay, come to um line up with Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, mm -hmm. because it says a time to speak, right? Uh -huh. So this is Isaiah sixty-two and six, and this is and this is and this is the time to speak, man. Right, nonstop. This is the time to speak. This is Isaiah 62 and 6. Why? Because Israel, it has not been restored yet. So it says, I, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Ooh. Please ask yeah. the third chapter says, is it time to keep silent? And is it time to speak? Yep. This is the time. That we're not supposed to be keeping silent. We're supposed to be speaking, God. right? Why is that? The seventh verse is going to say it, and give him no rest till he establish 
until he made Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So until Jerusalem is a praise in the earth, we ain't going to stop speaking, man. We're going to keep on speaking. Yeah. Because the kingdom is not here yet. So this is the time to speak. Uh, and, uh, and and going back to uh, to what you had brought out in Second Chronicles about how he has compassion and pity upon us, right? And it's not it's not like, you know, the Most High has given these prophecies, you know what I'm saying, to to, to basically like do him any good, do him any service. Because this this Bible, let me show you this real quick. This is uh what's that second Ezra? Second Ezra 16. Uh second Ezra That's Satan right there, man. What you say? That was Satan right there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, this is second Ezra 16. And I'm going to start at verse uh, 11. He says, the Lord shall threaten. <laughs> the Lord shall threaten, right? This Bible, these prophecies, this is nothing but a death threat, right? So if he's setting up prophets to warn you, it's not to do him any good. It's to help you out. <laughs> you see? So it will, it will behoove you to take, uh, to take, you know what I'm saying, to take caution and to take um and be circumspect, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to these scriptures, right? Because this is nothing but a book of death threats, man, right? And also a book of, 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 of promises of life to those who do his will. But right? I'm going to finish this out, and I got a quick other precept. He says, the Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to the powder at his presence, right? Because we understand when Most High God sends his son, Yahweh Shah, and um, his, his presence, you know, fills his earth. Listen, man, it's going to be bodies stacked up on top of bodies. Right, you're gonna you're just gonna shrivel up and wither away. You can't handle that much power, man. Right, so this is Second Ezra chapter one. And I'm gonna start at verse uh, 26. It says, "I'm gonna start at verse 25." He says, "Seeing you have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. When you desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you." Right, and this is and that's gonna begin whenever he tells his prophet to stop talking. Right. Stop sending out these videos. Stop setting up camp on the street corners, right? <laughs> That's the beginning of him not showing mercy anymore, right? Verse 26, whensoever you shall call upon me, I will not hear you. For you have defiled your hands with blood and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. Yeah, that's not always necessarily talking about you're physically out there uh, 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 having blood out there in your hands, right? You, you have blood in your hands by not wounding your brother, man, right? Mm. Verse 27, he says, you have not, as it were, forsaken me, but your own selves, save your, uh, the Lord. So that's what I'm saying, man. It's not like he, he wrote these things to, to help himself out. It's for you. Because when you forsake him, that's your tale, man. You're forsaking right. your own self. <laughs> All right? If you want life, you need to turn to life. And these scriptures, right. this doctrine gives you life, man. The everlasting life that you need. All right? And so uh, you, had, you had a precept? Yeah, God. Uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel two. Hold on, slot. Yeah, because you said, um, because you said, um, this Bible is a book book of um death threats, essentially. Which you know, of course, there's a balance to the Bible. It's not all consisted of 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 um of death of death threats, but majority of it is, man. Right, because people like to say, "Oh, you're the Bible, the, the good book, the good book." Well, <laughs> well, let's see, well, let's see what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. This is Ezekiel, the second chapter, and verse nine it says, "And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without." Yeah, man, on the outside and and inside as well. You know, that's the Bible. It says. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. See, mm -hmm. nothing but nothing but death and destruction is written in these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Just just peek back and over what you said. Okay. This Bible is, is a is a book full of death threat, death threats, which actually compels our people to to actually come into this truth. Let me go ahead and get that. Ah. In Second Corinthians, in Second Corinthians five yeah. and eleven, because um. Because the Lord, he said to compel my people that they may come in. Now, how do you, 
Now, when you go into the word for compel, it actually means by force. Hmm. And how, how do we do that? This is Second Corinthians 5 and 11. It says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And what's the terror of the Lord? The prophecies. America is going to be destroyed. If you don't you know, listen, you know, uh, there will be a judgment for you. Things of that nature. So that's how we persuade our people by the terror of the Lord. So called uh, threats. Uh, it says, but we are made manifest unto the Heavenly Father, and I trust also, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right? So that was the point. Uh, yeah, man. And so and so that brings me to uh, the book of Proverbs 29, right? Because <clears throat> well, before I get that, all right, because we was talking about how you know, whenever whenever these prophecies do stop going out. And he tells us to shut up whenever the time or the season for speaking is, 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 is done, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have this thing called the famine of the word, right? And it's nothing new, right? This is this is a, a concept that you find all throughout the Bible whenever there's no prophecies being poured out. All right, let's go to first Samuel. Oh, that's the spirit, man. First Samuel, the third chapter. Yep. I was just flipping there. <laughs> I was just flipping there. Oh, dang, that's bro. The spirit. <laughs> that's the spirit. Not again, go. man. I can't make it up. Can't make it up. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was I was flipping right to first wow. Samuel, bro. Wow. wow. There you have it, man. You see? Yep. So this is first Samuel three and one. And the child Samuel ministered unto Yahweh before Eli. And check this out, y'all. He says, The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There is right. no open vision. Now let's go into that word precious. All right. It's your car. And it says valuable, prized, weighty, precious, rare. All right. So in those days, the word of God was rare. Right. And we are embarking upon those days right now because be real with yourself, man. You ain't never had a flood of, of, of edifying videos, you know what I'm saying, from, from young Israelite brothers. To, to daily, you know what I'm saying? To daily issue out the uh these these prophecies and edif uh, and edify videos. You you haven't had that before. So the right now the word of God isn't precious. Well, it's still precious, but it's, it's not rare, right? Because you have it in abundance, right? But but when the famine of the word comes, it's going to be rare right then, right? He says there is no open vision. Yeah, and that word vision is going into prophecy, which which is going to tie me into uh Proverbs 29. I have a precept. Right quick, got up. because because it says that the word of the Lord was precious in those days, right? Mm -hmm. Which who carries the words of the Heavenly Father, the men, right? Mm -hmm. So Isaiah thirteen and twelve, because the reason why we're even made precious mm -hmm. is because we have the words of the Ooh. Heavenly Father. It is Isaiah thirteen and twelve. It says, <clears throat> so now it says. Uh, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Now, why is a man going to be made more precious than fine gold? It's mm -hmm. because we're going to have the words of the Heavenly Father, Lord willing, we the men, Lord willing, we hold fast in the door unto the end. So the reason why men, the, the Israelite men is going to be made more precious than fine gold is because we're going to have the oil. Yep. We're have the oil. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say because we're going to have the oil. Yep. We're going to have the oil. Yep. That's why we're going to be made more precious than fine gold because everybody's going to be coming to the elect like, yo, 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 I'm, I'm what's going on? What's going on? Right? We're going to be hotter than the, the new iPhone 12 that just dropped. <laughs> yep. That's a fact. Yep. Yeah, that's it. We're going to be that covert that's basically going to uh, block you from that win. That, uh, exactly. Win. I said that too. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, let's go to Proverbs 29, verse 18. <clears throat> so this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, all right, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And let's let's look into that word vision real quick, where there's no vision. All right. Because if you if you just look at that cursory glance, you know, you'll you read over like, yeah, wherever, you know what I'm saying, nobody's like seeing anything or whatever, you know, people's gonna perish, but let's look into it real quick, right? It says Let's look at line C. It says vision, oracle, prophecy, divine communication, right? So where there is no prophecy or divine communication like it was in, in the days of Samuel, 
and like those days that we're about to embark upon the feminine word, right? When there's no prophecies, when there's no vision, the people are going to perish, right? <laughs> You're going to perish, man, because you don't have instruction, right? Because these words in this Bible, it instructs you. It tell, it forewarns you, right? Whether you know all the breakdowns or not, right? You At least you understand the overall gist of what these prophecies are talking about. Listen, great evil and only evil is going to come. So this is what you need to do to prepare, right? You have faith right. in your house, so, Shah, and, and you keep the law, sacred commandments, right? What do you say, y'all? Precept. Tom, what you got? Uh, as First Corinthians one and verse um twenty one, because it says because it says that where uh where where there is no uh vision, which 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 the brother had went into it, whereas there is no prophecy, or 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 where there is no divine communication, the people perish, right? So. This is First Corinthians one and twenty one. It says, "For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not knew not the Most High. Now, now the uh now the wisdom of the Heavenly Father is dealing with this gospel that we go out there and preach. And preaching goes into prophesying, right? Yeah. Preacher, a preacher is a prophet. It said, yeah. it said, uh, for after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom." Knew not the heavenly father. What wisdom? The wisdom of this world, right? It pleased the most high by the foolishness of preaching or prophesying to save them that believe. So the whole point of prophesying or preaching is to save people. That's the whole point. Yep. But if there is no preaching, if there is no prophesying, people perish. Come, come. And, and because how could, because because so like the people who's going to be saved, they got saved through what? preaching or prophesying mm -hmm. and that was it um, and, and you know um and preaching also shows for your actions because like look i'm pretty sure you know what i'm saying to to the uh to the common eye during uh during the time of, of noah man noah looked pretty foolish you see what i'm saying yeah, right. out there preaching you know prophesying while he was nailing you know what i'm saying that art putting nails in the art man he was looking foolish it, it hasn't rained a day since then, I mean, well, it, it didn't rain any days before that, before that flood, man. So he looked foolish, right. you know, telling people, hey, it's about to be a flood, man, right? Okay. It's about to be a flood of water. And now we're out here again in the days of Noah, telling it's about to be a flood, except this time it's going to be a flood of missile, right? <laughs> and people <laughs> and people are looking at us like we're strange, right? But it's right. going to save those who, who enter into this thing with the faith of babes, right? This isn't for the, the, the wise and mature in this world. This word is for people who, who has a spirit to make them humble down and become as little babes, because that's the only way you're going to get the kingdom is if you come into this thing, just wipe like, like the book of second Ezra. I want to say it was chapter five. It says uh, to reform your thoughts. You got to reform your. You go into that word. That's a compound word reform. You have to literally reform your ideologies and your way of thinking. And the only way that can be done is through these scriptures and through the spirit. And that's how you ultimately going to be saved, right? Because the spirit is going to basically knock you down off your high horse. Because I don't care who you are. I don't care if you seem like, as, you know, you was the most humblest man coming to this truth. Man, we all had some pride upon us. I know I did, you know, when I when I was fresh up at the Christian church and when I, when I was com first coming to this thing, which I, I'm still a babe in this truth, right? But when I first came into it, I'll, I'll admit there's still a little bit of pride in it, man. A pride in me because it's like, man, you can't tell me everything I was taught was wrong. But no, man, you got to reform your thoughts because the most high God, he's, well, he said he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Right. So I'm going to go to second Ezra, verse 12. I mean, chapter 12. Well, since we're on that humble rant, I'm going to actually go to chapter 8 first. Second Ezra 8 and verse 48. It says this, In this also thou art marvelous before the Most High, and that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and has not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. Right? And so because Ezra had that spirit of humility upon him, right, which ultimately came by Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, Right, the most high God allowed this man, you see what I'm saying, to to um to understand these prophecies and get the breakdowns of these prophecies. 
and get these dreams and visions. Further proven that if you don't have a humble spirit, you're not, listen, you're not, your spirit is not going to bear witness and you're not going to be able to receive the words of these prophecies, which is ultimately going to have you destroyed. All right. So with that, I'm going to go to uh, second edge's coil. Right. Because the scripture says the most high resists the proud. Ah. So most high resists you that means he 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 has nothing he has no he has no dealings with you so he ain't gonna deal with you mm -hmm. oh yeah so uh let me go right here to verse 36 it says thou only so this is basically give you a backdrop so this is basically after the most high basically show ezra a vision about the lion um and and, and the eagle in second edge 12 uh, so he was about to um, tell what well, he was telling Ezra right here to write all this in the book, right? So starting at verse 36, he says, Thou only has been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that you have seen in a book and hide them, right? He says, and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets, right? So we also, we don't just, you know, of course, when we prophesy out there in the wind or whatnot, every, everyone is going to hear this, right? You're going to hear it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you you listen to it and you actually understand it with the, with the ears of your of your understanding, right? Because hell, Edomites hear this all hear this message all day. We're out there on the street corners, but they don't they don't perceive it, man. They don't have their eyes are not enlightened to it, right? So right. He's, it's in teaching to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. Verse thirty nine. But wait thou here thyself yet seven days more, that it may be shewed thee whatsoever it pleaseth the highest to declare unto thee. And with that he went his way. Verse 40, and it came to pass when all the people saw that the seven days were past, and I came not in, again into the city, they gathered them all together from the least unto the greatest, and came unto me and said, What, have we offended thee? And what evil have we done against thee that thou forsakest us and sit us here in this place? So basically, the Israelites, all right, in Jerusalem, they was asking the Israelites, listen, have we offended you like, that you haven't come back? All right. Because, you know, once again, it's a it's a it's a prized possession whenever you have a whenever you have a prophet, man, amongst you. All right. And these people, they understood that. So that's why I was, they was asking Ezra, have we offended you that you didn't come back? Right. So verse 42. <clears throat> Verse 41, what have we offended thee and what evil have we done against thee that thou forsakest us and sittest here in this place? Verse 42, for of all the prophets, thou only are left us as a cluster of the vintage, right? As a cluster of the vintage and as a candle in a dark place. This is what they're calling Ezra. They're calling Ezra a cluster of the vintage and a candle in a dark place. Now let's pay attention, right? He says, and a haven or ship preserved from the tempest, right? Now, why do they call Ezra a candle in a dark place? Well, first and foremost, these words is a light unto your path, right? And Ezra had the word straight, hot, straight off the skillet <laughs> for the Most High God, man. He just got this fresh, new, hot prophecy, right? And that's why the people said that you are a candle in a dark place. Let me further prove that real quick. This is Proverbs chapter four. And 18. Yeah, I got a precept. I got a precept after that. Come, come. He says, <clears throat> Proverbs 1 18, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You see, Ezra was a just man. He had that light of that prophecy, and it was shining more and more unto the perfect day. Right. Before we uh we tie this real quickly. It's 2 Peter 1 and 19, and it says, we also have a more sure word of prophecy, which is what Ezra just got, wherein too, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. What they say to Ezra? They call him as a candle in the dark place. Why? Because he just had that prophecy, man. He says, as a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star Arise in your hearts. You see? So whenever, further proven that whenever these prophecies are going out, man, it's shedding light upon this dark 
planet, man, especially the, the land of the darkness, which is America, right? What'd you have up? Uh, uh, Matthew 5, starting verse 13. Come. Just going back to the light, which which that light is dealing with um, the truth, right? This word, these prophecies, which is carried by who? It's carried by men, right? On um, um, the ministry of the prophets, like Hosea 12 and 10. So it is Matthew 5 and 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, we're with solid be salt to right, which a lot of you know brothers break it down like, yeah, man, you know, Jake is the salt of the earth, you know, because they can play basketball and dance and things of that nature. But that's that's really not what is even even dealing with for real, man. Like dealing with dealing with is dealing with this word. It says, Is it thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man yeah because if you're not doing the will of the heavenly father like Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says what good what good what good are you mm -hmm. you just you're, you're just going to get rid of good riddance yep. right if you lost this word it says ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill so a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid and how are we the light of the world by having this word right here right mm -hmm. neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel yeah man you don't you don't light a, a candle and just hide it under a, a, a bed or a bush right it says but on the candlestick why and give it light unto all that are in are in the house symbolizing that the house right mm -hmm. was in the dark place yep yep right? yep yep just like how we are in a dark place but we have this light yep. and it's shining there's the point of verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. And how do we do that? By making full proof of that of our ministry right. by going out during highways and byways right. and professing the word. It says that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Ezra, which Ezra was one of the prophets, he was letting his light shine. How was he? How was he doing that? Because he had the word, he had the he had the prophecy. Uh, yeah, that salt. This is this is the salt, man. Not Jake getting boogie and playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Someone having this word right here, man. Yeah. And, and one common thing, one common thing that our people uh, or a pattern that our people always show is that you know what I'm saying they have that pride, but yet deep down inside, man, they truly do want the light because they know deep down inside they're in darkness, right? Let me uh let me go to Matthew, which is previous chapter before five, Matthew four and sixteen, right? He says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. Now, how did they see the people that sat in great? This was a prophecy stemming back from Isaiah, right? That was ultimately prophesying about you have a shot. All right, we're gonna get that. He says, but the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death. Is light sprung up? Now, y'all check this out, man, because is America not known as a shadow of death? If you don't believe me now, mm -hmm. right, you're about to you're, you're about to bear witness and testify that in, in the next couple of months, you know, maybe a year, right? <laughs> when Jacob's trouble is, is full-fledged out, right? When, when people are getting slaughtered, right? You will know that this is the shadow of death right here. This is the land or the valley of the shadow of death, right? But right now, the light is sprung up. This light is being sprung up by the form, by these prophecies, right? And the one who embodies all these prophecies is none other than Yahweh Shah. That's why Psalms 47 says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. For all these things are testifying of him, man, and things that he's going to do. Now, let me show you, let me further prove that he is that light which sprung up out of this land of darkness. This is John 1. It's John 1, chapter uh, yeah. yeah, this is John 1. And I'm gonna start at verse. Sure. I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, start at verse three. Well, it's verse four. In him, and speaking of Yahweh Shah, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. So this is Yahweh Shah. He's shining in darkness. And how's he shining right now? Because he he told you in Matthew 28, "Lo, I'm with you even until the end of the world." So that means he's right here with us today. He's in the midst of me and Naka while I'm doing this video because he said, we're two or three are gathered in my name. I'm in the midst. How's he in the midst of us right now? Through these prophecies, man. Through this book. We're supping with Yahweh Shah, right? 
So we have light and darkness. All right, he says, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you have to, you, now you got to jump to the third chapter, verse uh -huh. uh, yep, 18. Yep. Come on, come on. All right. All right. Yeah, so this is uh, John 3. Yep. John 3 and uh, and 18. He says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believed not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Yet yeah, you love not knowing these prophecies rather than light, man. Because you know these prophecies and by default, you understand Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah's game plan, right? <laughs> you hate truth, mm -hmm. which goes to show that you love this darkness, man. You love right. darkness rather than light, right? That's why he says um, in the same chapter, John 3, and uh, what was that? In 12, he says, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Yeah, because we have our conversation in the heavens right now whenever we talk about these prophecies. So it's already get go off the rip that you're not going to believe these prophecies because you don't even you don't even understand the things of this earth. You know, <laughs> Jake is out here lost, man. They're, they're looking for the light. But once the light does come, they reject it because uh, they <laughs> because they re they reject things that that's clearly seen. What was that in Romans chapter one? He says for things that are clearly seen uh, in the base. I'm paraphrasing things that are clearly seen in a uh, natural realm. Uh, testifies that there's a God, right? But people by their, uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and get it real quick. This is Romans 1, somewhere around 22. Romans 1 and uh, 19. It says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. And what's known of God right now? These scriptures, these prophecies, right? He says, um, for God has shewed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yeah. And so uh, another form of those invisible things that he's talking about is these prophecies, right? Because prophecies is, is testifying or is telling you something that has not been seen yet or have not been done yet, right? But you can clearly see signs of these prophecies by things that's, that's already coming to pass. Right, That's right. Verse twenty one, he says, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You see, it was hmm. darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and that is hmm. Jake for you all day, every day. You profess to be wise. You profess, oh yeah, man, I ain't black. I know I ain't black. I'm Kimmy, nigga. Kim, it means black. The hell? <laughs> oh, I ain't black. I'm a more. Nigga, I'm more a means black. What the hell? <laughs> you know, you're professing yourself to be wise, but you're a fool and you're rejecting the true doctrine, man. Right. Matter of fact, get Romans. Get Romans 11 and 7. God. Mm, getting God, getting God's beautiful crazy. Them pomegranates, man. Oh, uh, it's some pomegranates. Hell yeah, yeah. Some, some pomegranates. Yeah. I read it. It's Romans 11 and 7. Mm -hmm. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he's seeking for, right? Like, bro, said, Israel be seeking, be trying to seek the truth, but they haven't obtained it. Who, who, who obtained it? But the election who have obtained it, right? Right, which the election, the elect, going to the Greek word, eclectos, which means the chosen. Mm -hmm. And the rest was blinded, yeah, and the, and, 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 and the rest were blinded. And when you're blind, what do you see? Nothing, dark. Dark. <laughs> Woo, man. They got that spiritual blindfold over, over their eyes. That's it, huh? They, they had that veil, the covering cast. Mm -hmm. Like it references, and I, I think that Isaiah 25 and seven. God. Oh. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight back to uh. Did you want me to get that Isaiah? Isaiah what? Twenty five? No, no, no. It's cool. Okay, yeah. So this uh, going back to Isaiah. I mean, uh, Second Ezra twelve and forty two. He says, for of all the prophets, 
thou only are left of us as a cluster of the vintage and as a candle in a dark place. Yeah, we just covered that, man. There's, there's a lot of ways you can unravel that. He says, and, right? So they're about, about to tell you another thing that Ezra was like unto them. And as a haven or ship preserved from the tempest. Mm. That's what Ezra was like to our people. And by default, that's what all these prophets, especially Yahweh Shah, is like for our people. He's like a ship from the tempest. Does that remind you of something? Noah, Noah's Ark, man. Noah's Ark was a, a ship to preserve uh, to preserve the elect from the tempest, right? And we understand right. that the tempest is going to a, a, a great flood, right? And who's the flood today? Esau, right? Isaiah 59 says that he's, that Yahweh is going to raise up a standard, right? Against that flood. So, you, <laughs> hey, man, there's so many ways you can unravel this thing, bro. But to make a long story short, your safe haven are these prophecies. You cannot, and that's why we started off in, uh, in Ecclesiast uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 39, because that's, that is where your mind should be. Your mind should not be on this dude who just got knocked out in the damn boxing mat. Now I understand right. you're going to scroll on your IG, you know what I'm saying? You're going to see, you're probably going to laugh or whatever. But don't dwell upon that stupid vain crap, man, because that's all it is. It's vain. You know, y'all over here looking at an a, a, a old man, you know, Mike Tyson, you know, fight some other dude. And y'all just, y'all y'all share videos and stuff like that all day long. But when it comes to sharing edifying videos, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't do it. Why? Because right. your mind is set up on vain things. It is not set up on these prophecies. And that is why, because you don't know the time of your visitation, the Most High God is going to allow Esau to lay you level to the ground like he did in 70 AD. Let me get that real quick. I have a precept. up. Tom, what you want me to get? First, uh, first Corinthians 14 and 1. <clears throat> and then I'm going to jump down to verse 39. Mm -hmm. it, says, it says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. but rather that ye may prophesy. Yeah, mm -hmm. prefer to prophesy. Why? Because that's the greatest gift. Yeah. Uh, skip to verse 39. Mm -hmm. It says, boom, it says, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues so that's just going back with what you were saying about prophesying you got to covet you got covered to prophesy rather that we prophesy man god god because when you don't have these prophecies upon your mind when you don't know the time and the seasons listen most i go most high god is going to hold you accountable to that this is luke 19 44 coming straight from the king of king's mouth himself man he says i'm sorry verse um 42 saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this day in thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are here from your eyes yes so now these prophets are here from your eyes man right for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side does this not sound like what's about to happen once again Esau's about to have, his, his, he's about to muster up an army, right? And they're going to surround your home. They're going to compass a trench about you, right? They're going to lock you in. They're going to force you to be quarantined, right? Because guess what? It was the Edomites that, that Christ was making reference to right there, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Verse 44, and shall lay thee even to the ground, meaning they're going to basically kill you. And your, 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 ground, your body's going to be parallel to the ground. And thy children with thee. And they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, speaking of, of our temple in that day, right? Which is going now into the temple of your body. And once again, the Most High God's temple, right, is getting destroyed. Israel, well, at least the two-thirds part of it is. He says, why? Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Why? All because you didn't take heed to the prophecy. It's all centered around you not knowing the time and the season. They're going to catch you unawares, right? But when your focus is upon what trip am I going to go up on next, right? Uh, 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 what am I going to eat tomorrow? Who's, who's, who's uh, playing basketball tomorrow, right? <laughs> Let me try to get the best cyber deal uh, since I missed Black Friday, right? Oh, yeah. Man, the Most High God is going to put you to death with no hesitation. Yo, right? that is so crazy how like, bro, I forgot all about those things. 
right, that's just that's just that's just how you know how like far removed from this world we are. God. Matter of fact, second Exodus 14 chapter says to let go of the mortal of uh, uh thoughts. Yeah, I get it. That's, I forgot all about I forgot all about that crap, bro. <laughs> to be honest with you, like what is it like 20? Wait, yeah. things in the 20s. In the 20s. Yeah. Like 21. Let me see. No, 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 no. I actually, I actually, actually starting at verse 14. 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Second edge is 14 and 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Every, the thoughts, the thoughts of men, we gotta let go of those things, right? Of course, you know, of course, you know, it's a balance, right? Of course, it's a balance, but for the most part, man, don't be worrying about what these people are worried about. All this, all this vain things, right? Cast away the burdens of men, put up now the weak nature. Why? Because the Lord is calling us to be men, gird up our loins like a man, right? Man, because we we over here, we just worried about getting to the kingdom. That's that's all I'm thinking about. I, mean, I could be playing the game, bro. I'd be playing the game. I could be talking to my woman, whatever. And I'm just thinking about the kingdom. Yep. Um, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Just like how, let's just say you're in class, right? You're in school, right? You're back in high school. And you know that you have a hot date <laughs> on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. All week, yep. you, although you're in class, you at home, sleep, mm -hmm. you're going to be thinking or dreaming about that hot date. Yeah. And I'm thinking about our hot date yep. to the kingdom. That's the hot date. Uh, and matter of fact, tells you that in um Revelation the 19th. Man, I gotta get it, bro. Mm -hmm. It kind of it kind of seemed like we was about to wrap up, right? Nope. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I hey bro, I just got a flood of priests up okay, This is um this is um Revelation 19, and I'm starting verse seven. All right, the hot date. It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. And who's that? And who's the wife? The wife is dealing with the elect, man. Right. Because, you know, you precept that with Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 10th. Matter of fact, you can get that from me. Matthew 25 and 10. Yeah. Right. Because it says, uh, for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. Who was the wife? Matthew 25 and 10, it says, and while they went to buy, talking about talking about the five other foolish virgins, the bridegroom came, who, who was the bridegroom? Yahweh Shai. And they that were ready went with him to the marriage and the door was shut. You see that? So that's the marriage. That's the marriage right there. Yahweh Shai coming back to marry the elect, man. Yep. Yep. All right, verse eight. Back in Revelation 19 and eight now. Oh, Revelation 19 and 8. Yeah. Yeah. This is into her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Right. The fine linen is not talking about fringes, right? <laughs> Two fringes and whatnot. It's talking about the doctrine. Verse 9. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of the heavenly father. So that's the hot date, man. Nope. That marriage, that marriage with the bridegroom, y'all was shy. And Lord willing, we make it to that hot date. Oh, willing. Yeah, Lord willing, Lord willing, we don't get to the date. And y'all was shy, like, man, I don't want your ass. Hmm. You dirty. You don't got your clothes on, your garments. I don't want your ass. Oh. Bye. Low one, low one. Uh, 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 we get to that hot date. We get there, and we hop on those church and do what we need to do. Plain and simple. That's right. And it all starts with what? Covering these prophecies, and also this Colossians three and two. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth, like brother was talking about, man. You know, if you know you got a hot date on Friday, you're thinking about that all week, all right? Mm -hmm. 
So we're setting our affections upon a things above. We're not setting our affections upon these earthly carnal things that's, that's about to, they're hastening to pass away. Things that's about to be put, put on fire, man. We're not, we're not, we're not putting our affections upon those things, right? Let me skip down here to verse, um, verse 13, verse 12. It says this, put on therefore as the elect of God, right? So this is what the elect is going to be putting on. So he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, right? Well, let's first go into the word holy, right? Separate, right? So you're separate from the things of this world. So by default, you don't have your, your affections upon this world. You know, because some people may say, man, it just seems like, yeah, he's here, but he's not here, right? Right. <laughs> that I know that's how it is for me, bro. I know I'll be going to work, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, like, because I have a profession, like, I got to have my mind on what I do, but at the same time, it's like, I'm there, but I'm not, man, you know? Right. Because right. all day, you're just daydreaming about, like, hey, man, I'm like, what the kingdom going to be like, or what's my next video going to be on, or, or like, right, exactly. Like, one of, like, is there something wrong in me that I need to be repenting of? You're going to have something regarding the kingdom or the church on your mind. And that's, that's a part of you sanctifying your mind, bro. Right. And this is what the elect puts on. Right. So even if we're not the elect, Lord willing, at least we do the things what the elect men do, <laughs> you know? So at least you got a shot at this. Right. <laughs> So verse 12, he says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, right? And because a lot of our people, even within this truth, they're not merciful to, you, to people, man, right? As soon as you have one, one offense against a brother, they're ready to cast you to the wolves, bro. It says kindness, humbleness of mind. Yeah, going back to that word, humbleness, all right? Because if you're not humble, listen, he's not going to reveal anything to you. He's going to resist you, right? It says meekness. Right, because the meek shall inherit the earth, long suffering, forbearing one another. Meaning, you're listen. You're basically long suffering with one, with one another, man. You're quick to forgive, right? You don't, you don't, uh, you don't wear your emotions on your sleeve, and you don't, you don't get so easily offended, right? And forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as my shot forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, right? Mm. It's the bondage of perfectness, right? And these mm. are all things that who does? The elect of God, like it says in verse 12, all right? And he starts out the chapter by saying, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. All right. All right. Because all these earthly things are going to perish, man. Yahweh yeah, Shai yeah, actually told you that in Matthew 6. Con, con. You want me to get it? Yeah, con, yeah, con. Bring it out. Yeah. Edification sake. Yeah. Seek these, uh, seek these heavenly riches, man. That that thieves can't break in to steal. Yeah. Matthew six and nineteen. He said, con. Oh, con. You you want to read it? Con, yeah. He says, live not for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt." And yep. where these break through and steal. Yeah, man. Everybody, like, like, like you said, everybody running in to Walmart or all these different stores, Black Friday and Cyber Cyber Monday, all, all, all on, on the internet, breaking their backs to get the new PS5 or a uh, new Xbox and whatnot. People can easily steal those things, man. Yeah. Right? Look, you going. Verse 20, he says, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Right, exactly, but nobody can steal your spot of being the elect of the 144,000 and one-third. Nobody can steal your glorified body. Nobody can steal your eternal life. So that's what we seek, man. We seek, we seek things like this. Uh, verse 21. And that's, and that's just a fact. Oh, that is just a fact. Oh, verse 21, he says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Exactly. You're you're just into chasing the bag. All right. Your whole entire mind and your your time will be chasing the bag. If you want to chase a woman, hey, all your mind, all you going, all you're gonna be thinking about is chasing a woman. Hmm. But if you think about this Bible, you're gonna be thinking about how. 
you want to serve the heavenly father each day yep. that's the first thing in my mind when i wake up yep. serving serving the lord Shoot, sometimes you gotta you know what i'm saying you, you, you like literally dreaming that you're teaching <laughs> yo 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 for for real bro like i bro like i had previously previously i had a few dreams like that bro that i was actually putting into work yep because yep. we just, it's <laughs> in us man yeah i just had one last night that's why i just brought it up <laughs> we love it yeah just like a just like a chick man You're like yeah man i just i, I just had this dream about you mm-hmm. why because you love that chick well that's how we're supposed to be with uh with this word man right all right with this truth dreaming about it all those things uh that shows true love and dedication. Just like a basketball player, just like a football player, they had that dream of scoring, scoring the uh, uh, um, the game winner mm-hmm. or, or the game winning touchdown. That's what athletes dream of, holding up that trophy, yep. right? We, we, I, I done had a few dreams about chariots, right? I, I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed to see chariots as well. Things, man, things like that excite me. Things like that excite me. And they also help seal your faith, like what we was talking about last night. Yeah, that's right. Oh. You had anything you wanted to add? Yeah. Nah. Don. Don. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me too. So. Hey, um, hey, um, almost, almost an hour again. Yeah. See. See. But yeah, man. Um. You know, I hope y'all was edified through it. And uh, until next time, say shallow one. Shallow one.